in that moment where you're just about to commit that sin, where you've been tempted, where you have made up your mind that you're going to do it, and you've been struck by the whisper of shaitan, and just as you're about to commit that sin, you wake up. Okay, so those are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ That after they've been touched by the whisper of the devil, they wake up and then suddenly they can see. They're completely uh, you know, tuned out of that sin and they're turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. That's the best case scenario that you were about to commit the sin and then you stopped. Where the Prophet said, إِذَا ذُكِرْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَانْتَهُوا That when you're about to commit a sin, if you're reminded of Allah, don't Ignore your conscience. Don't ignore your taqwa. Don't ignore those thoughts about God. Stop right then and there. Don't say, all right, well, I'm already halfway through the sin or I'm already, I'm already at the point of committing it. I might as well commit it and then worry about repentance later. Stop yourself then. But what about when a person just commits the sin and you commit that sin, especially the first time you commit that sin before you've become desensitized to it. You feel so dirty. You feel impure. You feel a great sense of remorse and regret. And what you do in those moments is going to decide whether that sin becomes a means of bringing you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that sin becomes a habit that takes you down the path of shaitan perpetually. That's where the Prophet sallallahu talks about a very unique way that we interact with these angels that are on our right and our left. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ Kiram and Katibin, you have these noble angels that are recording on your right and on your left everything that you do, anything that you say, anything that you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to write. And there is not a single word, ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. Not a single word that you utter, not a single expression that you utter, except that those angels write it down readily. Now, as those angels write down, they have a sense when you're about to commit a good deed or you're about to commit a sin. Because as Sufyan rahimahullah said that when a person is about to commit a good deed, they emit, the soul emits the scent of musk, this beautiful scent. And when you're about to commit a sin, the soul emits a nasty stench. And so there's a sense that a sin is coming. But then after you commit that good deed or that sin, and those angels write down everything, there's one exception. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ said, that when a person first commits a sin, Allah commands the angel on the left to hold his pen for six hours. Now, six hours here, an hour not being 60 minutes, but six periods of time. There's a, a time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hold off. And if that person repents within those six hours, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have that angel write down that sin, but instead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a good deed written for you instead. If a person goes forth and commits that sin, the Prophet said one sin is written down. Now to speak to that for a moment, you know, if you're thinking about that angel that's on your left side that's being told to withhold their pen and not to write it down, we know that the Prophet said even if the sin was written down, the one who repents from a sin is like one who never committed sin in the first place that good deeds wipe out sins, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always left the door of repentance open to you. But in this unique situation where the angel is told not even to document the sin, what is the effect of that? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a sin is written down as one sin if a person actually commits it. But a good deed at the minimum is written at 10 good deeds up to 700, up to whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees it. So from the mercy of your Lord, if you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately after committing a sin, this isn't a person that intended to commit a sin and say, I'm going to repent within six hours, so I'll be okay, so it's not going to get there. It's someone who, you know, fell into it and, and woke up right away and said, I can't believe I did that. Astaghfirullah, I turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On your records, not only will you not have the sin ever recorded, but you'll have the good deed of istighfar, the good deed of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recorded, which is at minimum 10 times up to 700 times up to whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees. And so that's the mercy of your Lord, that even as these two are recording on your right and your left at all times, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows leniency through the one on the left and says, hold your pen, see if my servant will turn back to me, see if he'll wake up in the midst of that moment, see if my servant will decide that this is not something I ever want to do again, see if this will be the means by which my servant turns back to me. And verily, a sin that brings a person back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than a good deed that takes him away.